viewer, none of us are no longer surprised by the fine textile works found in Viking Edge graves. Silks, fine accessories and precious metals are not uncommon. Tablet woven bands are part of this material and have given many of us a special thrill with their exquisite weaving techniques and still glittering metal threads. Hi, I'm Carolina and today we will take a close look at the tablet woven bands from Valsjärd in Sweden. I am a textile historian and archaeologist and today I give this presentation as an independent researcher based on the TechSoft platform. The tablet woven bands I will show you today were found when the boat graves in Valsjärd were excavated. The later part of this presentation will focus only on one group of bands and their quite unique weaving technique. So, let's travel to Valsjärd in Sweden. If you travel to Uppsala Central Station in Sweden, and then continue about 5 km north, you will find the old Uppsala archaeological area, which before and during the Viking era was a central place in this region. The still present large grave mounds tell us of a time where life and death were different. From old Uppsala you can then travel about 4 km further north and you will find the Valsjärd gravefield on a hill just east of the Fyris river. Here 15 boat graves have been excavated as well as several chamber graves and cremation graves. On the map you can see the boat graves marked with yellow shapes. The boat graves belong to both the Vendel and Viking era but today I will talk only of three of the Viking era graves those who contain tablet woven bands. The textiles from the Viking Age boat graves were never published. In 2015 I got a fantastic opportunity to examine part of this then still unpublished material, namely the tablet woven bands. My mentor in doing this was Annika Larsson, a textile archaeologist then in charge of moving the finds to a new magazine. Since then we have both worked with this material. And earlier this year, a Nicolaasson's article about Viking silks was published in the Bulletin of the Museum of Far Eastern Antiquities, number 81. This is today's date the most comprehensive publication of Valsjärdes Viking era textile material. My own contribution to the publishing of this material is a bachelor thesis you can find online and also this presentation. As I mentioned, three of the in total ten Viking Age boat graves contain tablet woven bands. Boat grave number 3, 12 and 15. You can see them as filled yellow shapes on the map. I have grouped the bands from these three graves according to their weaving technique. In group 1 we find bands with pattern made with the lift warp technique. In group 2 we find bands with pattern made from weft wrapping and sumac. And in group 3 we find only one band which is quite different from the others. We will have a short look at group 1 and 3 and then focus on group 2. But first, let's have a look at some terminology. A band's total width is composed by a pattern section in the middle and stave borders at the edges, or a pattern section and just outer border tablets. The stave border can be divided in outer border tablets, inner border tablets and between them hidden border tablets. The band also have a brocading weft from metal thread and might have a pattern weft from silk. They might also have a ground weft. Starting with a band in group 3 which was found in boat grave number 3 dated to early 10th century. This is the older of the three graves. The band is preserved together with other organic material and in the box can be found several band fragments, likely from the same band. The box is marked with leather and textiles, but it also looks as there is some kind of hair fibers. Looking more close, we can see silk fibers and a weft from drawn silver thread. All fragments look like they have the reverse side up, so we cannot see a pattern, but despite this there is still a lot of information in there. The band is probably made with 20 to 22 tablets, mixing silk thread and vegetable fiber thread in the warp. It is probably patterned with lifted warp technique and the silver weft turns at the outer border and so still holds the band together. 
The bands in group 1 are all found in Botgrave 15, which together with Botgrave 12 is dated to the middle of the 10th century. All band fragments in group 1 are likely from the same band. It is made with 18 tablets, mixing silk thread and vegetable fiber thread in the warp. The patterning technique is lifted warp and it has no stave borders, just double outer border tablets carrying all silk. This band is sewn to a silk taffeta, and the silk warp originally had at least two different colors. But now we will focus on group number two. Most of them come from boat grave 15 and they are probably made on the same warp. Some of them come from boat grave 12. Here is only one fragment, but the arrows in the picture are there to show that it is actually longer, about 10 cm in total. The bands from grave 12 are not made on the same warp as the one from grave 15. The analyze I will share with you in a moment is based on the bands from grave 15. I will first talk about theoretical and physical reconstruction as a method, show the weaving procedure, and then talk a little about how they were placed in the grave. For pattern analysis, a practical test often isn't necessary, but being detailed is a must. We humans are very prone to automatically fill in missing pieces in patterns, and of course this must be avoided. For these bands, I worked in three steps. First a version, as it is, which shows the band as it is preserved. The blue sections are well preserved pattern wefts. The black sections are very broken or missing parts of the band. The orange marks possible pattern weft, usually dark sections with well defined edges. The green also marks possible pattern wefts, but much more uncertain than the orange. The green also means undefined edges often a blur a mess of dark weft-like shapes. To the right are notes for folding lines, wear, tablet rotation turning points, and angles of the metal weft, since this changes considerably on the same band. After making this first as-it-is pattern, I make one for my choices, and then one clean-up for weaving. All the X-marked ones in the middle band here are deleted in the right one, and all the blue-black ones are added. I do these steps because it makes the preservation status of the band and my choices to reach a weaving pattern visible. When working with especially tablet woven material, I have learned that for anything but the most simple bands, the first visual analysis of weaving techniques one makes in most cases are wrong and or not detailed enough. To fully understand what is going on, a detailed visual analysis and then practical weaving tests are needed. While weaving, we will have a look at some aspects of the technique and materials. The band is woven with 12 tablets in the pattern section and 4 for each stave border. The warp threads in the pattern section and in the hidden border tablets are in a very poor state. The state of preservation and the look under a microscope makes it plausible it's a vegetable fiber. The warp threads in the inner and outer border tablets are reeled two-ply silk. Under a microscope it looks like a dark color. You can also see that a band is sewn to silk samite. The pattern is made with a reeled filament silk with almost no twist. Under a microscope it looks like this has been of another color than the darker, more bluish silk warp. The silk weft is worked in several weft wrapping techniques. Sumac is present, but it is also wrapped in different ways and also moves back and forth when this is more convenient. This needs to be analyzed row by row. The procedure is similar to the method for the visual pattern we saw earlier and is done on top of the pattern analysis. The wrapping technique can be seen only in a few places. This is marked with red and orange lines on top of blue squares. 
The grey squares mark pattern where the wrapping technique can't be seen. The silver thread is spun and the metal strips are of a varying width. It is used single and there are 18 to 21 wefts per centimeter. The silver covers the pattern section, passes through the shed of the inner border tablet and covers the hidden border section. Then it is dropped below before the outer border tablet and picked up after turning the tablets. This is a common way of handling a brocading metal weft in tablet woven bands. As you might have noticed by now, is that even if the silk weft makes the visible pattern, I still lift the flax warp in the same pattern. So, what did we learn from weaving? I would like to stress the factor that I'm not a weaver. I am an academic using practical methods to understand a material and its story. Meaning, I appreciate the fact that my understanding from a practical point of view will always be limited. That said, some things are quite clear. This technique is harder to weave than the lifted warp technique, and it is much more time consuming. Finding proper materials are hard, both in terms of high quality and dimensions. All flax threads but the Gutemann 100% linen breaks for me, and after a while even that one does. Finding a suitable real silk for the warp took a while, and I had to settle for a 3-ply instead of a 2-ply. The silk weft is visibly the worst choice I made, and at the same time the best seeing what is available. This is however the first thread I would change in next attempt. The silver passing is too thick, but I can only source thinner thread as gilt. I weave on an Usabe kind of loom, but a small one, about 1.1 meter long. To minimize the wear of the material, the warp would benefit from being at least twice as long. Practical understandings like this lead me to a conclusion that even if this doesn't have to be a professional workshop production, the high quality of materials, weaving technique, space requirements and more makes me assume that the production place and the weavers would be somehow specialized. What more can we learn from measurements, design, etc? The single information units like materials, patterning, number of tablets, measurements, etc. gives a framework to the kind of bands that are interesting to compare with. In this case, this would be bands from Wielehe, Mammen and more bands from that area. To take this further, let's say that we between the bands could compare the compound formula, number of tablets, patterning and yarn diameter. If there only are a few and small differences, we might conclude that they are made at the same place. But if, for example, the factor yarn diameter differs quite a lot, we could look at the other factors to see the weaver's or designer's choices. Comparing compound formulas like this can lead to a deeper understanding than the single information units themselves, and this would be the obvious path to go down in further research. Talking about comparing with other material, as the last talking point of this presentation, I just want to show you how the bands in grey 15 were found, since this is quite interesting in itself, and also if compared to Mammen and Villehöy. All bands are found together, lying almost on top of each other, near the head of the deceased. This image is based on the original grave plan, where the bands are called silver fabric. Here you can see the layers. One of the band's fragments was sawn to each other, forming almost a triangle or a Y shape. Talking about this with Marie Wallenberg, she pointed out the similarities with the Wielehöy band. 
which not only has this kind of shape, but is found with fur. According to the conservation note about the bands in grave 15 in Valsjärde, they are found in layers with black organic matter and hair fibers between and around them. This opens for the possibility that these bands once were mounted on fur, which make a comparison with the Vilehö bands even more interesting. And with this, I would like to thank you for listening and watching, and I hope there will be future opportunities to compare this material more closely with both Vilehö, Mammen and other similar finds. Thank you.